Well, I, th I, I think the principles, the design principles, remain identical, which is go back to the journeys, understand what they're trying to do. Uh, there are some unique complexities in business to business, mainly to do with how many people get involved in decision making. There's that sort of stuff going down. Um, they're possibly slightly more limited in the devices and the channels that they would naturally reach out to use at the end of the day. Um, but I think that the behavior, and interestingly, the, the, you, if you read those two markets, they'll say they're coming together much tighter because the business to business person is also the B to C person at the same time. And some of that more agile behavior is flipping over into B2B now uh, in terms of expectation. Again, there's some interesting stats on that which say, I don't now need a sales team in the same way I did do because my B2B customer is 60% across that journey before they need to engage with the brand. Because again, they're using online to find out what goes down and all the rest of it. So you'll find B2B marketing has changed accordingly, trying to get involved in a conversation that the customer's already doing quite nicely by themselves, thank you very much. So the role of engagement generally has been changed, and within that service is, is being ch changed. So probably it needs to become even more proactive, anticipatory. Um, I've done an, a, quite a lot of work recently about uh, buyer's guides, you know, trying to get that as part of the B2B journey, because that gives you a very good reason to get involved with people at the same time. And it blurs the lines probably between when is it marketing, when is it sales, when is it service. I think that's one of the key things that's coming through. And how do you resource that in the same environment and how do you cater to those requirements? So I think the contact center is probably growing out to be a major touch point period in this new world of which service is one bit and sales and marketing is the other bits. You know. Hence my thing about the customer hub. I think we just need to bite that bullet and say, we're now in a world where we need to have almost like the equivalent of a network operating center. You know, like certain industries have invested in that. Highly visual environments, highly real time, and you bring those skills all together in a single operating unit to be that responsive, you know, at the end of the day. But I think business to business expect the same speed as that retail customer does. Well, I think it's in a whole number of quite complex things. I don't think brands are particularly good at advertising it, so certain things I just didn't know you were doing you know, at the end of the day. And I do think that um, situation is probably still the biggest driver. So I might be somebody who normally prefers text, but it just didn't work for me on that particular thing. You know? Or I instinctively know this is going to be a bit of a row. I prefer to have somebody who I can bounce off of. So that's driven me in that thing. And if you do the analysis, it's pretty much, gosh, I, must, I need to be available. So I, I, I kind of suspect that I need to provide voice, text, and possibly video. We didn't talk a lot about that today. But, you know, Amazon's experience of the Mayday service, which they've put onto their little tablets, where you can, you know, physically get hold of somebody instantly, and they're, they're available to me visually. I know that video chat has gone down very, very well in uh, certain circumstances like retail, where be me being able to see a product has got me more confident about buying it from you online, where it's virtual, and as a result of that, basket values go up and conversion rates improve. I would imagine that if I was in the health service or medical profession, Video chat, again, could be extremely useful, or even at a professional service, like a, maybe a solicitor, where I need the reassurance I'm talking to a real person, but I don't, and I can't afford to resource it physically any longer in branch network terms, you know. I think there's huge potential for that, and the text there, uh, and we know in terms of the web that we're not writing as much, there's too much of that, we're trying to get more and more into video, so the time is right for that. So probably at the end of the day, you need a mix of voice, what does that look like, chat, what does that mean, text rather, and then a video version probably as a combination you know, of each of those things. And you, and, and you just need to make, make those things available and customers will probably consume those in all sorts of different ways. But as I said to you before, that gets more expensive, so you definitely want to make sure that you're only using live now when it's absolutely needed and you've done a very good job of getting the rest of it into a consumable version of self-service, which again is way beyond FAQs these days, I think. Yeah. You know, there's an interesting development of using AI, so it gets smarter as it goes through. 
and then there are various versions of interfaces. They call it uh, intelligence assistant. So Siri is, is, is one of those. You know, that's, if you, actually, if you find out what Apple thinks they're going to do next, apparently they are now anticipating this world where there's so much stuff because they just signed up that music service, haven't they? They've got us for health already. They've got us for this, this, and this. And so Siri, in this next world, becomes somebody who doesn't give us all the data because our heads will explode. They're going to try and find out more about us and then intervene on an exception basis. So those devices become much more about alert, alerts, real-time alerts. Um, and if we mirror that in our contact centers, what we're trying to do is to say, we are kind of always connected to our customers, we know what they're going to next need, and we try to proactively alert, and only if things get too difficult do you need to talk live. That's almost like live becomes tier three support in that sort of model, you know, it's interesting. And I'm trying to do that with a housing association where we've got peer-to-peer as our first level, because let's face it, if you build a physical community, why don't you build a digital one in today's world? You've got self-serve as your next thing with it, and then what has been their live call center environment becomes tier three in the future, all delivered through a mobile. And you can imagine how that will eventually sort of come through, but that's a big journey from where we are today. Well, I think it's a contrary world as far as that's concerned. You know, if you start at the top end with NSA and work our way downwards, we live in an environment where we are probably quite rightly suspicious as consumers. Um, and indeed, if you look to the youngest generation that are now on things like Facebook, they have a much more uh, conservative view about what data I am and am not going to allow out of the door than we might have. So. I think a thing that organizations need to think about, whether you're a government down to a, um, a commercial brand, is what is your policy around the use of customer data? And I think it should be conceived as a value exchange. And if you are uh, in a position of simply collecting and using it covertly, I think in the world to come you will suffer from that. And I think that you need to have high standards around of security of that. I think you need to make yourself liable for that problem because a lot of companies are not very good at their data security of customer details. Um, and I think that you need to be thinking about if we collect it, this is how we're going to use it and what we're going to do. Example of, I worked a bit with TUI, who were going digital en masse. Now, that's the holiday business, all right? And it's an interesting thing they've got because they do want to have it from an app right before you buy, right the way through digital. Now, there's a very interesting thing that happens with that. Sure, it really is appreciated if I could order you know, a new set of tours, given the fact I, as a family, go back to the same location each year without having to have the traditional thing of, after breakfast, I'll sit in that queue for the tour operator. You know, It'd be great if I could organize that up front. But you know a lot about me in these situations. So one of the things they were playing with was, what would happen if the customer had access to the CRM record as much as the business. And I had the ability to edit like Wikipedia. Would that give me greater comfort around of what you collected and what you knew about me? Now, I don't think that's the only way to achieve that goal, but there's a real need to build greater trust about what you're collecting and what you're going to do with that data. Uh, and if it doesn't work, it will go sour. So just as a final point on that, I have another business I'll never do, but just to make the point, I'm going to run a data protection business for you. It will start with rich Californians and cascade down. But it basically uh, enables you to license out your personal data to organizations. Yeah, because you've got no respect for it, so you better pay for it. Um, and there's two parts to the business. One is automated uh, in that particular respect, and we automatically... Uh, businesses will start to automatically, in this new context, buy a license for your data for a period of time and for usage. And the other thing I have in my business is a law firm, and I sue your ass. Yes, just to make the point that you need to respect that data and use that. Because again, in the world that we're going into of online avatars in real time, you will probably have that data available about you, what you do want to have available, what you don't. And it will be all automated in terms of weekly shopping and this and that and this and that and this and that. We are becoming virtual in that respect around of our data. And what people do and don't know about us is becoming increasingly you know, important to people. So the organizational response has to be, what's our policy? What's our standards around of that? How can we rebuild trust? Because otherwise, the customers won't come. And we will be severely disadvantaged in that future. <laughs>